Now, before I start anything, I got to say, no matter what you hear me say, no matter what piece of information I lay out in front of you, please tag that with cause of God. I've accomplished so much, but it's cause of God, though. My life is covered with grace and favor. You know, Bishop Jakes told me one time, when you got favor on your life, no matter what you're thrown into, you're going to always rise to the top. All of this that I have is really because of the grace of God. Now, I'm going to tell you something. If you could get a couple of things from me, if you could gather this piece of information. Now, I want you to get this now. Imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attractions. Your real life, the one God really got for you, is in your imagination. It is not in your current situation or your current paycheck. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. All that mean is in the beginning, you just hope something pop off. I was hoping I would get on TV. When I wrote it on the paper, it wasn't factual. I was just hoping. You just got to start with the hope. Then what happened is through grace and favor, he give you a couple of them things you hope for and then you're supposed to start believing then. Your imagination is actually God showing you a preview of a coming attraction that he has for you. The moment you don't believe in your imagination, you negate what he got for you. God don't give you what you want. He give you what you believe. Believe you can get what you want like a child. Make plans like an adult and believe in them like a child. Just try it. Your problem is, you keep telling your imagination to the wrong people. How many times, man, have you had a tremendous idea and you went and told it to your loved ones and your so-called friends and they shot it down? You let them talk you out of what God got for you. Your real life is in your imagination. I'm just a real dude. I don't even have the education you all have. I flunked out of school. What I'm sharing with you is stuff that everybody can apply today. See, if you think you're too old to make it, let me give you a prime example. Colonel Sanders has been frying chicken his whole life. Colonel Sanders didn't get a franchise till he was in his 60s. As long as God waking you up in the morning, that's the sign that he ain't through with you. I don't know what it is. I, I don't know what you desire. I don't know what you've been envisioning in your spirit. That, that if you believe God, all things are possible unto you. A lot of people, their problem is they don't want nothing. Have decided that your life is over and that if it was going to happen, it would have happened by now. But you don't want anything. When you want something, you got to go for yourself, even if the person next to you does not. Man, you know what I'm asking God for right now? And I'm 60. Ain't nothing wrong with wanting something. God got a big life for you. The smallest scripture I ever read changed my life. You have not because you ask not. Do you know the difference that that could make in your life? Asking starts a unique process. I don't even know how it works. All I know is it works. He says, when you pray, you want to pray for what you desire. When the last time you really asked him for something? Or do you keep making requests that's inside the confines of your paycheck? Didn't I just tell you God ain't in your paycheck? Didn't I just tell you he ain't in your job title? Don't ask God to help you function better in your dysfunction. Ask him for your dreams. Ask for things that even seem impossible. That's not just being hopeful, just being positive. That's your faith being released. Take the limits off of God. I do not live my life in the confines of what anybody says to me. So now, if you have not cause you ask not, do you understand if you up your ask, he has to up his give. You can start this today and change your whole game because you're going to need grace and favor anyway. 
But you got to ask for something. Quit asking God for little bitty stuff. Lord, help me make my rent. You up your ask, he up his gift. This ain't a magic trick, man. I have asked God for some tremendous stuff. Everything he hasn't given to me is on the way. I have no doubt about it. Believe it, you receive it. I got it right now. I receive it in my spirit. I'm walking in it. I'm laying out plans. I'm picking out stuff. Getting ready. I received it in my spirit, and I'm going to have it in my life. Believe this will change your life. Somebody just shout, I believe. Believe you received it, and you should have it. If you have to force yourself to believe it, then maybe you should realize that just because you desire it doesn't mean you should have it. Think of the things that you forced your way into and then you had to cry your way out of it. You got what you wanted, but you didn't want what you got. He is saying you receive it in your spirit before you receive it in your life. What I found is God's plan has always been better than my plan. One day, when you see what God was up to, you'll thank Him for not answering those prayers. If it's supposed to be yours, you can rest assured nobody else will get it. You cannot have prosperity in the natural until you receive it in your spirit. The reason some of you are broke is that you have a broke spirit. It comes in your spirit before it comes in your life. You got to have a tremendous work ethic to be successful in here. It's going to be a lot of trying times, so you have to have a tremendous work ethic. Faith without works is dead. Lord, I thank you for passion. I thank you, Lord, that I never went through anything that got so bad that it took my fight away. I cried, but I didn't quit. Don't seek the blessing, seek God. Keep him first place and the blessing will seek you. Are there any God seekers left? I see the money seekers, but are there any God seekers left and say, all I want is you. 